In this week's Two Wheels Better, Wayne checks out some new products and there's more from Neil Hodgson. But first, we're off to sunny Spain. Welcome to sunny Barcelona. Well, it's not very sunny yet, but it is very early in the morning. I'm at the Catalonia circuit and I'm here for the launch of the brand new Avon Azaro Sport Tyre. And just to make you all really sick, I'm going to get changed and then I'm going to ride all these bikes. So this is the new Avon Azaro Sport Tire and this is the chief tire designer for Avon, Pete McNally. Pete, did you have a rubber fetish many years ago? No, I don't think so. <laughs> I worked for Avon Racing Division for a fair few years, um, basically designing their race tires and I've moved over to road tires now. Oh. Um, but we're developing these sport tires we have here today and this is the launch, so it uh, seems to be going good so far. It's going great so far for me anyway, but uh, you design a tire. How, where do you start to design a tyre? Do you start with a pen and paper or, or what? Well, first of all, you decide what application uh, the tyres are for, whether it's for touring or sports tyres. Um, basically, once, once you've decided on that, say sports tyres, for instance, um, first of all, you decide on the construction and the pattern. They're the two main things. Uh, when we're doing pattern evaluation, basically, we'll get a slick tyre, we'll cut all sorts of grooves on it, uh, we'll run that round a track, uh, evaluate where. Once we've decided on a pattern, we can let marketing people see that and then uh, if we think that's what, that's what we want, then we'll decide on construction, mm -hmm. um, do testing from there and, mm -hmm. uh, and see what works. These, these are all new constructions now. Mm -hmm. uh, radials a few years ago were all, uh, had aramid belts going around them, right. two of them around the centre. They're all, these are all aramid wrap now, or what we call VBD. Right, let me, hang on, stop there. VBD, just explain that. Right, variable belt density. Um, effectively, a lot of radials now have a, what we call a wind-on aramid wrap around the tyres, um, mainly at a constant density right away across it. With VBD, we've effectively got, we vary the wrap rate across the tyre so it's spaced on the outside um, and a lot denser in the centre and it, it helps with stability. Right, fine. So, the Azaro Sport, so this has been a long, long time in the, in the development, obviously, how long an idea, what, it, what does it take from your initial idea? To, to come in here, time-wise? It, it can take anything up to a year. I mean, these took about six months. I mean, once, once you've got a, a tyre range sorted out, you start developing your next range anyway, right. and we work from there. And you use a lot of what you know from that last range, and you put it into your new tyres as well, right. and work from there. So that was my next question, next range. I mean, you've got this right, it's pretty good, but where do you go from here? Are you working on your next one? Yes, we are. <laughs> and I'm not telling you about them. It's top secret.
tough life this. It's getting very, very hot here in Barcelona. Hi, Leo. Hi there, Paul. Le oh, shit, that's hot, isn't it? Le <laughs> Leo Smith. They tend to do that. Yeah, I know, know, yes. Especially where these lads handle them. Leo Smith, technical oh, product manager. Is that right? That's right. Yeah. It's a very grand title. What are you doing here, Leo? Not got a duff one, have you? No, no, we're just looking at the tyres. These guys have been sort of beating around on it all morning. Right. And, uh, you know, we're just very surprised how little wear there is because the temperatures are very high here. Yeah. And these these guys are no slouches. They know what they're doing. And oh, so tell me, tell me about it, yeah. Just, just, just explain to me. We were here last year, the Avon Azaro tyre last year. This is the Azaro Sport. So how different to that to the other one is that? Well, with modern tyres now, they're, it's not so much that you build a single range that everybody can do things with, but you look to make range that suit styles of riding. And if you take the average guy who's got a sports bike, what he needs to have is as much choice and freedom with that bike as he can get. So there are times when maybe he wants to go uh, on a touring holiday or... or uh, just generally want a little bit more mileage from his tyres, so then you'd look to buy a sports touring tyre. Mm -hmm. But there are other times when he would want to use uh, the bike perhaps a little bit more to its potential, on a, maybe at a track day, obviously not on the road, of course. Oh, no. And um, <laughs> so for that, you need a tyre that's just a little more specialised, and that, that requires a slightly different style of tyre. So that's the that's why the Zara Sport is here. Right. For... So am I right in thinking they won't? They're obviously a softer compound than the, the, other, the other Azaro. Sure. They're, they're obviously a softer compound. The tread pattern is very slightly different. Um, you but can obviously see that it comes from the Azaro uh, style family. Yeah, because it's, it's different, but it's, it's similar, isn't it? I mean, it looks, the Azaro tyre is unique tread. I mean, yeah. you, I don't think there's anything else like it. They're very well, distinctive. Right. Very is, distinctive. That, is that a consideration when you make it? Do you want it to look different? Um, mm, yeah, yes and no. Or does it just turn out that way? It, sometimes it can just turn out that way. With Azara, what people have got to remember is that this is a brand new tyre technology and this is a new type of tyre and there are things you can do with these tyres that nobody else can do. Right. And so that gives you a lot more freedom to be creative with the tyre. Yeah. And the, the, because the tyre works differently, you have to pattern the tyre differently as well. So that's why you get the different the, the, the different styles, and Azaro is very, very unique in its look. Just tell me, I've always wondered this, the name Azaro, does it mean something? It, it does actually, yeah, a lot of people think that it's a made up name, but when we work on uh, tyres when we're developing them, the, the tyre has always got uh, a, a fairly boring project name, and the project name usually relates to the type of the tyre <laughs> construction, right. and with the Zaro, Azaro's project heading was if you can imagine it, sort of like a large uh, capital letter with then smaller letters underneath. And it was always Avon Z-rated, aramid fibred, rayon cased, zero degree tyre. And it, it's no wonder your technical <laughs> services. <laughs> <laughs> and it, we, I don't know how it happened really, but we just started calling it the Azara and we got so used to calling it then. the Azara that that's what it became. I like it. Well, I've certainly learned something now. But but yeah, we don't stop here, do we? This is the Azaro Sport. Tell me what's, uh, what else you've got up your sleeve. Right. We've, we've also got another version of the tyre that uh, in a softer compound, which is more for track day or race use, mm -hmm. the Azaro Super Sport. And that's, that's for the really, the really dedicated guys. Right. So when do we get to go on them? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Oh, can't wait. It's a tough life, this, isn't it? Eh? Well, if you want to know how good a tyre is, you ask a racer, and here is that man, five times TT winner, British champion, Jim Moody. Jim, you're having a ball here in Barcelona, aren't you? Yeah, I'm here enjoying myself, and uh, we have some snow in Scotland, yeah. and to be here in the sunshine and going around in bikes, it's, uh, yeah, it's good fun. It's good fun for you, because you're beating us all up on the track there. Are you actually trying? I'm trying, yeah, I'm breaking sweat, and uh, you know, I, don't, I don't normally get out on tracks and not trying. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, no, I've never known a racer to go out and, and take it easy, they just don't do it. These tyres, Super Sport, Avon, these are the Super Sport now, we're on the extra sticky ones, what do you think of these? Yeah, they're very good, I mean, uh, I use production tyres in racing most of 1997, and these things seem pretty much as good as anything I rode last year. Right, so these are pretty close to what you used? Well, yeah, the rear is the same as a prototype we used at Donington for the final round of the production championship, and uh, yeah, on that day we broke the lap record at, at Donington, and the front's a modified version of the front we were using at the yeah. time. Well, there you go. If they're good enough for a five times TT winner, they're good enough for anybody. Jim, just own up. Tell all our viewers, own up that I beat you last night. I want everyone to know this. Yeah, you beat me, Paul. Yeah. At pool. At pool, in the hotel bar. And he was half cut at the time, but there you go. <laughs> <laughs> 
has it been a success for you guys? Yeah, I think it's gone very well. We've had some very good comments from all the world's press about the tyres. I think they've been very surprised at the world's first sort of VBD sports tyre. So, uh, yeah, brilliant stuff. Just big question: You've got sports, the Zaro Sport, and the Zaro Super Sport now. You would expect the Super Sport to be much more expensive. Is that the case? No, not this time. We've we've decided that we're going to price these a little bit differently, and they'll be not much dearer at all than the standard sport because we realise that the guys who buy the, the real dedicated scratchers mm -hmm. who buy the super sport tyre, they wear them out that much faster, you know, yeah. it's, it just gets too expensive for them. Yeah. How many tyres have you got through here this couple of days, any idea? Um, probably about a hundred tyres. Love me now. You know, under it's all your fault. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't my fault, I've not bent any bikes anyway. Right, and another thing people are going to want to know is when can they go out and buy these things? Uh, all these tyres, Sport and Super Sport, will be available in the shops over the next two to three weeks. Right, good stuff. And I see you've got your kit on now, the man in black, so uh, time for one last blast, eh? Yeah, come on then. Choose your weapon. Right, I'll have that one. <laughs> And so, two glorious sunny days were had by all in Barcelona. Perhaps an indication of just how good the new Avon Azaro Sport and Super Sport tyres are is the fact that 18 very quick riders, not to mention a five times TT winner and British champion, were let loose with over £100,000 worth of machinery for two days on a racetrack. And nobody had the slightest problem. Confidence grew, cornering speeds increased and lap times were sent tumbling as the bikes were put through their paces. Everything you'd expect from a top quality performance tyre. Jeff, what are you doing? Sorting out a new helmet? No, I'm just I'm just checking it out. That mine's um, mine's very similar to that. It's just uh, I'm just in my local bike dealer, just checking everything out. So this is a regular leisure activity, is it? Having a browse? Well, when you're a professional motorcycle racer, you have a lot of time on your hands. So I, I do a little bit of training, and then it's just general messing around. So I'm, I'm in here quite often. Well, look, cutting the messing around certainly for this year. Prospects for this year. How do you think it's going to go? What are your ambitions? Um, I'm going to be really original here and say I'm going to be world champion. No, um, oh, that's good. Yeah. Well, it's much, much of the same, you know, I really, the last two years, I, they have been very, very disappointing and um, I feel like we can have a lot better year this year, it's an important year for me. Um, I feel like I've been given a second chance, you know, after two bad years with Ducati, I thought it might have been uh, quite difficult to secure a ride, but thankfully I have, with a good team and, um, you know, I'm feeling that if I could be in the top five in the first few races, nothing crazy, get some points on the table and then, you know, uh, the, the most important thing for me, I think, this year is to improve throughout the year. Don't get a good result at the beginning and then, you know, struggle to repeat it. If I can improve all through the year and by the end of the year win some races, then I'll be doing cartwheels, I'll be happy. Yeah, but not on the bike. <laughs> not on the, no, no, I did all them last year. I did all the cartwheels and somersaults last year on the bike. <laughs> so far, you've done some testing. I know Shara Lamb, you were sort of off tune somewhat. You had a, tum you know, tummy bug. Yeah, that, 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 was in, uh, that was actually in Indonesia, the first test. I had, uh, I had quite bad food poisoning, so I missed that. So that, that was a shame, but it's, um, since then I've had, I've had quite a lot of testing on the bike. I've been to Spain, I've had a three-day test there. I've had a three-day test in Malaysia, and I've had a three-day test in Australia. So I've managed to do a lot of miles on the bike, and I'm, I feel pretty confident. Uh, you, looking at your times, uh, particularly at Phillip Island, I mean, you, you were well up there, weren't you? And just a few hundredths of a second behind Yanagawa. So that must, you know, must have given you a buzz, that. You, you felt yeah, it's, a chance. yeah it's, it's, it's getting closer every time I ride the bike. You know, the first time I rode the bike, I was two and a half seconds slower than Akira. And that I was trying, you know, it wasn't as if I was just riding around. I was, you know, I was pushing it at that. And I came home, and that was just before Christmas, and I had a bad Christmas because that's all I could think about. But since then, you know, I've, I've been back on the bike, and I've done a lot, lot more miles, and uh, I've got, I've chipped away at that gap. The next test, I was about a second slower, and then it ended up, it, it ended up at the last test in Australia, where I was, 
you know, we, we did basically exactly the same time. So that's really encouraging for me and, and the team. They can see that, that I'm, I'm going to progress and uh, that they've, they've, they've signed a good rider. And you've settled into the, the Kawasaki team well. I mean, completely different sort of approach, I would have thought. The sort of um, Italian, brilliant Italians, all bouncy. And then, uh, is it more organised Japanese, or wouldn't you quite put it like that? Or what? Oh, no, no, I put it like that, definitely. I mean, it's, it's run by Germans. It's run by Harold Eckel. He's a team manager. And um, he's, very, um, he's very methodical. Everything he does, you know, the way that... This, the, the general organisation of the team, you know, from flying to get into the events to to the you know the running of in, in how the garage should be run inside, it, it's fantastic. It's so organised. You know, with with the Italians, they was they were pretty laid back. You know, if, if testing on a on a private test, if the track opened at nine o'clock, we might get on it at, at eleven. Where with Harold, I have to be there at eight o'clock, sit down with like the morning debrief, what the plan is for the day, what we're going to test, and you'll say right today you have to do race distance twice. Which is hard, you know, in a hot country. It's the last thing you want to do. But he's making me work, and he's getting a lot more more out of me from that. So you know, we're all going to gain in the end. And you feel more comfortable in that more rigid setup, then, do you? Yeah, yeah everybody's different. You know, like Carl rode for Honda in '96, Carl Fogarty, and he hated it. You know, because that was very similar, very organised. Yeah. And he, he prefers he, the more laid back. It, yeah, side he then. prefers the more laid back. I'm I'm naturally a little bit lazy, and I'll do the least amount of work as possible. Like like most of us, you know. You're honest. I, I am I, honest. I'm honest. No, I'm honest because I know I know the way I work, obviously. And so with Ducati, I found that's exactly what I was doing. I was doing the least amount of work possible. I was pushing myself in training, but when it got to actually riding the bike, I was being a bit lazy. So now I've got I've got quite a strict German stood behind me, you know. Yes. And he's you know when I come in and I've I'm trying to come up with these excuses, he'll say no, nope, back out again, you know. Let's see you do that again, then do another ten laps or whatever. So you're now fluent in German and Japanese, are you? Or, or what? <laughs> is, is there any language problem? Or no, okay? thank God everybody speaks English. <laughs> well, I, my chief mechanic's American, I've got an Irish mechanic and I've got a German mechanic, so yeah. thankfully English is the, uh, the language that is spoken and, and uh, I'm just about getting the hang of that. Yeah, and Ari speaks good um, English as well, doesn't he? Yeah, 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 he does, he does. I mean, he's, Japanese, they are pretty quiet guys anyway and they're pretty shy, but he's, he's got a good grasp of the English language, a little bit better than mine. But uh, no, he's, he's a nice guy, he's a good lad. Well, I must say, you're looking good for, for this year at least. You're obviously looking forward to the, the first race and then we, we've got to watch Neil this year, is it? Yeah, definitely. I said it last year. I said, you know, watch out, I'm going to have a good year. And I really thought I was going to. But from, from the first round, it, you know, it was terrible. I had two DNFs, so it's going to be my year this year. And I'm, I'm just going to give 100%. It's all I can do. And I just want, to, I want everybody to be behind me and I want people to turn up at Donington at Brands Hatch and get, you know, the Union Jacks waving and and really support me and, and, and Whittam and Fogarty, you know, and just really get behind us, because it is a big help. Doug, oi, come here, come here. And he's flipping camera, man. Now, pay attention to me. Hammersmith, that is the location of this beautiful hotel in the centre of London. And the reason I'm here, because this is the Motorcycle Trade Expo for 98. What may I ask is the Trade Expo for 98? Well, it's where dealers like myself will come along and have a look at all the new accessories that you can buy to put on the shelves to sell to you during the year. And we get an insight to what's coming. So if you'd like to have a look at it as well, you can join me. First of all, I've got to fill in my application form, otherwise they won't let us in. So, I'll see you in a bit. Oh, oh hello. Go away, leave me alone, I'm trying to do a television programme. Hey, hello! God, and Bennett, phones, they drive you mad, don't they? They're evil, but we all need them nowadays, and there's quite a lot of executive motorcyclists out there with, uh, you know, with mobile phones in the pocket. No good if it rings and they're riding down the road. So what do they do? Well, these guys have got the problem solved because they have this little device. The phone lives in your pocket. Some phones nowadays, I believe, are vibrating type. <laughs> Very nice, too. This sits over your ear then sits in your ear, this one on this side sits in your ear, whatever, you stick your lid on, you adjust the microphone so that you can get it close to your mouth, and you talk and you listen to people nagging you to death, and you can do and conduct your business over the phone whilst riding your motorcycle. may not be as safe as some people like, but then again, you might be answering a very important call, and it serves the purpose. These are going to be available in your shops very, very soon for just a little under 40 quid. So have a good look and try them, and they fit every phone you can think of. You name the phone, they do a fitting for it. Bye, I can tell you this Belgian beer is the business. Thank you very much. <sighs> Gorgeous, I bet you wish you were here now, Paul, don't you, eh? Well, you're not, I am. And I tell you what, 
last year if you watched two wheels better you would have saw this helmet well what they've done is they've just sort of upgraded a little bit for 98 they've sealed the visor a little bit better they've gone and put a bit of paint there just to blend it in a little bit um, but basically the same missing the eyebrow vent so it doesn't make as much noise as previously so it's a nice quiet helmet and that stays at the same price 120 quid for the plain one 130 quid for a fancy painted one but this is a new product from them and we've got to mention new stuff because that's what we're here for now as it happens this isn't actually available yet and won't be available for a number of weeks it's going to be join the rest of the many manufacturers like your AGV and your uh, and your FM and Bell and so on and so forth the many manufacturers that happen to use carbon fiber Dyneema uh, fiberglass in their mix to construct the helmet and laser have decided to use them now the fixtures and fittings on this are not going to be as you will get them in the shop but basically the same appearance with the fancy air venting at the top and here for demisting nice lid and will sell for less than 150 quid which makes it damn good value for money for a helmet using those form of quality and fixtures and fittings in that sort of shell composite uh, well it wouldn't really be right of me to just stick around the laser bit because there are many manufacturers of helmets and I would only imagine somewhere else in the show there'll be another manufacturer showing us a new helmet for 98 so I would think the best move is to find it I've got my beer I'll see you in a little while yes. well that was the lasers now then they're made in Belgium I told you that before if you were paying attention and this is a Boere and these are made in Italy now about five, six years ago they were in the country and there was plenty of them around but they sort of died a death. Now they're being re-imported the Boera and very, very soon in your shops will be this little baby here. And this is one of these multi-complex laminated machines and it's uh, nice and light, it's pretty, it's very, very tasty. It'll have Taipei approval, which is the highest of the beer standards uh, and looks the business. I bet you've always wanted to know what on earth these sound like. Well, they sound absolutely nothing like that. This is a new product from Micron, and it's an oval race can. Race can, exactly a race can. As of yet, not BSI approved, but nonetheless, beautiful. And really, really very well made. There's no doubt about it, they've, uh, they've got the job sorted. If you've got such as a Firestorm or any other sexy machine, you can put one of these on, and not only can you just sit it in the usual place, they even do a high raise kit to raise the can a little bit higher than the standard thing, so it looks uh, just like a race bike. It's nice, isn't it? In next week's Two Wheels Better, Wayne is back in his agony corner, and we look at a bike club with a difference.